Hello, happy Wednesday. I'm starting in the middle of the week this week because, yeah, it's just been quite a busy one, let's say. Um, I'm actually doing some chemistry today as well, which I feel like I haven't done proper like wet lab chemistry in such a long time. It's been mainly microbiology that I've been doing the last few months, as you've seen from my previous videos. So yeah, it's quite nice how I'm going to be doing um, some chemical extractions of the anemones that I collected from my field trip a few videos back. I will link that video on the little card thing here or maybe at this side. I don't know. I'm not a not professional YouTuber, <laughs> so I don't know which side the card comes up. Yeah, so I'm going to be extracting those anemones today and doing some other few bits in the lab and then I'll be working from home today. Here are my anemones out of the freeze dryer. You can hear that they're completely dried out now. They've gone like crispy and completely dry, so all of the moisture has been sucked out of them. Freeze drying or I think it's lyophilizing. I don't know if that's how you say it. I'll flash it up on the screen. Um, it's basically when you have a frozen sample and you put it in the freeze dryer and the frozen water sublimes into gas straight away. It basically stops the process of the water melting so your samples don't become soggy. They just go straight from being completely dried out as the solid water goes into the gas phase straight away instead of going into the liquid phase making everything soggy it's basically a quicker process to drying out your samples <laughs> noise there's a lot of machines on this morning but it's nine o'clock and I've just come in I'm going to do the second extraction of my anemone that you would have seen yesterday and the color looks so good let me show you look at this red color it's so nice so I'm going to remove this methanol and put it into a round bottom flask then I'm going to add more methanol and start the second extraction until tomorrow <music> just have a little chat while my sample is in the rotavap evaporating off the methanol from my extract hopefully you can hear me because yeah it's very loud in here but I'm very excited because I applied for a conference this week and this conference is in California so I've been to America before but I've only been to New York and um, I've always wanted to go to California and this conference is there so fingers crossed that I get in so this conference would be in March next year, so hopefully with everything going on, travel and stuff will be allowed again. And that's actually one thing that I'm really missing about my PhD is the opportunity to travel for conferences and for proper field trips. And now with like everything going on and not being able to travel, I just feel very trapped at the moment in my hometown, well, like where I'm doing my PhD and 
yeah, I'm just really, really missing traveling. So hopefully things start to pick up again soon. Hopefully we can start to travel for conferences because I enjoy having those conferences to travel to, to just kind of break everything up. So I'm not just always in the lab, you know, it gives a bit of excitement. And this is what PhD is about. You're supposed to travel. You're supposed to meet new people. You're supposed to go to conferences and, uh, and present your work instead of presenting your work over a Zoom call, you know? So I'm really hoping things start to pick up soon because I am really, really missing the travel aspect of my, my PhD. And please keep your fingers crossed that I get into this conference in California. I am going to be leaving the lab soon to go and play squash. So I've got all the stuff that I need for my experiment in the afternoon when I come back after lunch. I've been finding it really useful to uh, just lay out everything that I need, all of the equipment all of the tubes, all of the pipette tips before I do an experiment. So either the day before or like today, it's the morning and I'm doing the experiment in the afternoon. So I find it really helpful if I have everything already there, I have less stress when I come to do the experiment because I don't have to run around thinking, oh, I need this or I forgot this or trying to gather all of my um, equipment and things together. So it makes, makes the experiment a little more stress free. <laughs> Hello, happy Friday, the sun is shining, I'm in a good mood, I'm going camping this weekend to enjoy the sun, we're going camping on a beach, so that is what's motivating me to get through the day. Today is a pretty busy day actually, so I'm in now, it's 20 past 9, I'm going to prepare my plate so I can take readings on the plate reader, and then I'm meeting my undergraduate student because I'm helping him to prepare some samples for the LCMS run. And then I have a meeting this afternoon to discuss buying some new products from this company, nothing very exciting. Then I have my group meeting this afternoon. I also need to do the third extraction of my anemones that you would have seen, that nice bright red colour. Um, yeah, it's going to be non-stop, but it should be a good day. I saw this trend on Instagram, which was basically people texting their family and friends asking them if they can explain to them what they think that their research is about. So I tried it this morning. I text a few uh, close friends and family members just saying, uh, how would you explain my research to someone that doesn't know what I'm doing for my PhD? And I'm going to share some of the responses now and give them ratings because some of them do you know what? I'm really impressed by some of my family members and my close friends. They absolutely got it spot on. Um, so I will share those responses now and hopefully it gives you a bit of a, a laugh as well. So the first response here is from my brother. He said, are you not basically trying to find out which type of marine life, e.g. algae, if they can be used to protect structures? So everyone seemed to have mentioned algae in their responses. I don't actually work on algae, but good try. And yes, in a general sense, I am looking at uh, marine invertebrates and how I can use their extracts to prevent marine growth on oil and gas structures. Next up is a response of my dad. So again, he mentions algae. I don't use algae, dad, but maybe I will in the future. And it's not quite corrosion that I work on, dad. It's actually trying to prevent the buildup of marine organisms on oil rigs. But you're really, really close, so good try. This response really cracked me up. So this is one of my good friends from my friend group. And his response to uh, what I do for my PhD was chemistry. <laughs> yep, uh, it is chemistry. <laughs> Well done. <laughs> this is a response from another one of my good friends. As she said, I would say you're trying to find out how to stop marine life, barnacles, etc. growing on surfaces such as oil rigs. And you are correct. Again, no one's wanted to go into too much detail in the responses. I think everyone was scared in case they got the details wrong. But yeah, good job. Good job, mum, with your response. My mum was the only one to mention the lowering of the costs of decommissioning, which was the original title of my project. So well done, mum. Are you not trying to find a solution um, to stop the build-up of like, bacteria and um, algae and stuff from attaching itself onto oil and gas structures? Like, so you're trying to research... Um, how you can, like a natural resource of how to stop that happening. 
So this is the response of my boyfriend and he said I'm trying to research to prevent biofouling and marine growth on oil and gas structures. Well done. But I did ask him to go into more detail because I know that he knows more than that. This was his response with more detail. So he said, I'm trying to take different species of marine organisms which may have anti-fouling properties due to low fouling being built up on them. I take them and I process them through different chemistry methods. And then uh, this indicates if the species has specific characteristics which are related to anti-fouling. 10 out of 10 answer. Well done, Peter. Hello, hello. So I've just been to biological sciences to get the results from my plate because I don't know if you remember in the last video, but I was thinking that I had problems with my solvent, that it was killing some of my bacteria and actually promoting the growth of one of my bacteria, which was very strange. And then I thought maybe it was the water that was causing this effect. And I have managed to figure out that it is in fact the water, which is having an effect on my bacteria, but I can't really seem to explain it. It's a very, very strange result. And the annoying thing is, I need this water to dissolve my samples in to do the test. So back to the drawing board now. I'm going to have a discussion with my supervisor to try and come up with a new method for testing my samples. I'm not going to completely change everything. It's just a case of finding a new solvent for dissolving my samples in. Um, because I really want to test my samples next week. I really need some results to kind of keep me pushing forwards and keep me motivated because I feel like I'm not progressing and it's frustrating me. So I'll just show you my plate now. So I don't know if you can see the colour changes, but these three uh, columns here, so this is one test, this little section here, and this is just my bacterial culture on its own. And the more intense the colour of purple means that the more bacterial biofilm has grown. You can see here, I tested the old water that I was using because I was scared that it was maybe contaminated. And I tested new, fresh, sterilized water and compared them against each other. And just from looking at it visually, you can see that the results are sa the same across the bacterial strains. But when you compare these results of the bacterial strains plus the water to the bacterial culture on its own, you can see that these two strains in the rows here grow very differently, so they grow less, because there's less purple colour, than the culture by itself. And another interesting thing is in row B here, this bacterial strain actually grows better in the presence of this uh, millicue water, which is basically deionized water, so it's very, very pure water. It grows better in this water than it does with the, just the culture put in the plate by itself. So if we have any microbiologists that watch my video that can maybe explain this, please help me because I don't know why. And of course, I, I like the results for the bacterial cultures only much better because the colours are more intense, meaning that the biofilms have grown a lot more, which kind of gives me a better baseline for when I add my samples, I can see whether there is a drastic effect or not on the biofilm growth. So I am faced with a bit of a challenge here. I hope that wasn't too much of a technical explanation, but I kind of wanted to give um, just a better insight into what my test actually is telling me and what I was actually testing this week. But like I say, I'm going to contact my supervisor, ask for his advice, and hopefully we come up with a solution today. And hopefully we can start set testing my samples next week. I really, really, really want to test my samples. So I forgot to close off the video on that Friday, but at the weekend I just went camping. So here is a little snapshot of our camping trip. I'd like to say thank you for watching my video this week and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!